Matthew, I think it's chapter 27. And let's read verse uh, 26. Could you? Matthew 27 and 26. Then released he by Barnabas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. He said, they released he Barabbas unto them, unto the crowd that was calling for his death. And when he had scourged Jesus. And they, when they had scourged Jesus, that means they beat him until his flesh was inflamed and bleeding. He delivered him to be crucified. In other words, we done what we want to do to humiliate and to hurt him. Uh, now you can crucify him. You see, that's why in him we live and we move and we have our being. He paid the price. He took care of it. And the next verse said, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Then they took him. And they took him in the common hall and they all got together around him in a group. And they are looking at him and they are jeering and making fun of him. The next verse says, And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Uh huh. And when he had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Now can you understand that, how, how uh, he suffered, that we, we could be free, we, we can enjoy all of the good that he did. But he suffered first. He said they, they had planted a crown of thorns. They didn't just put a ring around his head. They put a hat on his head that was made of thorns. And when they did that, they put, they it put on a reed head. in his right hand. Mm -hmm. And then they, they began to kneel. They, they took the knee. And when they did that, they mocked him saying, Hell, king of the Jews, all right, you say you the king, let us, let us see what you're going to do about this. We're we going to see if you, if you say that, then we gonna, we're going to make you down here what we think a king should look like. So they're they giving him his scepter. They're giving him his crown. But they had already stripped him. They'd already embarrassed him and humiliated him. You see, we, we, we have a Christ, Jesus, that knows what suffering is. He's not, uh, not aware of what a human body can go through. He's aware. He did it that he would know for himself. And his flesh is going through something that's agonizing, humiliating. But he had to endure it. He endured it for he knew about the joy that was set before him. Say, so you, you and I got to endure some things to get to the joy point. You and I can't get to the joy point and we're not going to endure nothing. We want, we want. You know, we want to, if you're happy, you know it, stomp your feet, clap your hands. You, no, no, wait, wait. Uh, uh, wait a minute. That's something that went before him. All this they doing to him. And he's, he's taking it like a man. Like a human, even though he's God. In the flesh, he said, I got to do this for uh, my humanity, my creation, man. And so... Read again, he says. And when they had planted a crown of thorns. The next verse. And they spit upon him. And they, look. They spat, spit 
appointed. They didn't spit at him, they spit upon him. In other words, wherever they spit, it hit. Now you know you and I wouldn't have been calm and, you know, okay, I got to do that. No, we would have been enraged. <laughs> but they spat upon him took and, the, took the reed. and they took the reed that they had given him as a scepter and they hit him over the head. In other words, they was trying to injure his brain. They was trying to inflict the most hideous, uh, what we say, pain and injury that can be inflicted at the brain, the mind. They, they, they working on him. And he's, he's taking it. You know, if you're going to be great, you're going to have to take. <laughs> Some things in life, you're going to have to walk through. You and I, I'm talking about, you, you, you can't say, well, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. You know, because that's, you know, I, I don't know if I can, you know, because I'm not used to being, no. Some things, we're going to have to take it, walk through it. Walk through it. Don't stop in the middle. Keep walking. After a while, you'll walk straight out of it. So they working on him. They giving him a bad experience of pain, injury, and humiliation. That's what they're doing. They're working on him really, 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 really good in that area. And the next verse says, And after they had mocked him, After they had mocked him, They took the robe off from him. Now they put the robe on him, but then they took it off him. They, in other words, they wasn't for real. They was just making a show uh, and mocking him and trying to make him feel bad. Making him uh, less than a person. So now that they have mocked him, they take off that robe that they afforded to put on him. And then after they did that, and put on they his put back raiment. His own uh, garment and led him away to crucify him. Now you would have thought they had done enough. But it was not enough for our redemption. See, our redemption to be redeemed from the curse of the law, he had to go through that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be delivered, some things you're going to go through. All right, I know you don't want to say amen to that. But if you and I are going to be delivered from this body of sin, from uh, heartache and pain, then uh, not having enough to overflow. See, it's not a straight line that you're going to walk from not enough to overflow. You, you're going to have to go through a few curves. It's going to be a few things you're going to have to endure. And it's going to be some tests and some trials. Every day you gonna, it's something that you're going to have to walk through. Hallelujah. So he's, he's our example. And led him to be crucified. He's not even crucified and he's already gone through some things that we would never take. I know you and I would not uh, sit silent if someone spat on us. I know that. I don't have to, I don't have to say everybody that wouldn't take that put up their hand. I already know that. We wouldn't take it. We would not. We wouldn't do it, Larry. We, we, we would be enraged, I'm telling you, because that's, that's just not something you, you want to happen unto you. And, um, and as they came out. They what? And as they came out. They mocked him? 
they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. He said they found somebody to help him out. This man from Cyrene, he's, he, they, they see he's not able to get it done yet by himself. Hallelujah. He's not, he's not able to do it. He's, he's having a hard time. Anybody in here ever had a hard time doing something? Anybody in here, you know, we, 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 we sing that song. We say, how I got old man. You know, that's the old time, uh, old school. My soul looked back and wondered how I got over. See, there, there's some things you, you yourself, and I know, I think about, I said, how in the world did that, I get through that? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Hallelujah, it was him. I, I want to, I want to, I want to read Mark 15 and verse 21. Hallelujah. You know, when you, when you, my soul looks back and it wonders. You know, when you, when you've been through uh, hell and back, <laughs> you think, we ain't been through nothing. This is a light affliction down here. Light. That's what the Bible says. But uh, read Mark 15 and 21 for me. Uh, and when, they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by. Now that right there, who passed by. He didn't come to help him. He was just on his way somewhere else. Amen. So they had to compel him, make him, demand him. To help him. See, when, when you and I are at a crossroad and we can't help ourselves, my Apostle uh, Paul said, when all hope was gone, that they would be saved. Oh, my shadow. He took a shake He said, an angel stood by him that night. Say something, God is going to compel a helper to come to your rescue. They may not want to. They're not, you know, happy to do it. They're looking at you like, okay, so you, you, you say you all that, you know, in a bag of chips and coke, you, you go ahead. No, no, no. Compelled. Yeah. my scripture. Okay. Uh, the father of Alexandra and Rufus to bear his cross. See, God, he's always aware of your situation. He's always there, knowing where you are in life. He knows all about our trouble. He knows it. He, he's not waiting on you to tell him. Now he wants you to pray. But he, he's, he's aware. And he sends help. Hallelujah. And 22 says. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha. Yes. Which is being interpreted the place of a skull. Yes. And yes. they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh. They, they gave him a. A drink that no, that's not satisfying. It's not a good drink. And what happened? But he received it not. He said he refused it. He received it what? Not. He said, even though it would help my pain, even though I know, he said, but it's not the right drink. It's mingled with something. Hallelujah. And, and in order for you and I to be redeemed from the curse of the law, he had to go through it. He had to feel it. He had to hurt. He had to be humiliated. You know, that's why we can't take our salvation cheap. 
You know, he made a way for us to come out of whatever we in. It doesn't matter whether it's financial, physical, mental. He made a way. But you and I, I mean, now the enemy of your soul don't want you to find that out. See, he wants you to always, well, you know, this is the best I can do. No, 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 it's always another level. Always. It's always something at the top of the ladder that we're pressing. We're pressing our way to. Hallelujah. I want to read Hebrews 4. And I think around the ninth verse. Could you read that for me? If you if you can put it on the screen, I'll take it. Hebrews 4 and 9. Hebrews. There remaineth therefore. The what? There remaineth thereof. A rest to the people of God. Right there. See, that see, you're not always gonna go through uh <laughs> trouble in my way. I'll have to cry sometime. So much I'm going Talk sometimes. Go ahead. Stay awake at night. Stay awake at night. But that's all right. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Just we'll fix it after a while. Yeah, see, you. There. Now, I didn't write that. It's right there. Hebrews 9, or wherever he Four was. and 9. He said, there remain. Say, in other words, he never took it away. It's still there. God does not change. He said, behold, he said, look and see that I am God and I change not. So he said, there remaineth a rest. What? To the people of God. Now, now, right there, he made a very clear distinction. The rest is for who? The people of God. See, the world ain't gonna rest. Yeah. Uh, the world is not gonna rest. Every day it's gonna come up with something disturbing. Every day it's going to be something different. Oh, no, I thought it was. No, no, no. Oh, you know, they changed that last night while you were asleep. They, they was twittering and texting. Oh, no, that ain't, that's not the rule today. That was yesterday. And see, they done forgot yesterday is gone. See, and, and tomorrow they never be mine. So he said, it remains, I didn't change it. It remains a rest for the people of God. And the next verse says what? For he that is entered into his rest. He that is entered into his rest. He also has ceased from his own works. Yes. As God did from his. See, you, you don't have to say, oh, well, uh, make it happen. The Holy Ghost going to make it happen. You, know, you and I cease from being who we were. He said, he said, if any man, any man, be in Christ, he's a new creation. And all things gone, passed away. And behold, all things are new. See, in Christ. You got to get in him, in Christ. If any man, you get in there, we in there. Say, I'm in there. I'm in. Say, I'm all in. I'm <laughs> so you knew and I'm new. He said, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. You and I, let me tell you. God gave us, Jesus, he, he said, the Father is going to send the comforter in my name, Jesus' name. And the Holy Ghost is in us to do everything that we cannot do. Whatever it is you can't do and I can't do, the Holy Ghost can do it. Why? That's God in you, the hope of glory. And he's working mightily in you and me. 
See, you got to recognize who's there. You know, when somebody knock on your door and you can't see, you don't have one of those bells that show you. You know, we used to say, who's, who's there? <laughs> we got to recognize who's there, who's in there. The Holy Ghost is supernatural. The Holy Ghost does the supernatural. And when you stop at your limit of your natural ability, the Holy Ghost say, uh, let me check it out. Let me see what I can do. And he takes over. So the Holy Ghost is there to do what you and I are not capable of doing in our natural state. But he said, you got to call on him. Oh, Shia. Call on Jesus. Call him in the morning. Call him at noonday. Call him before you go to bed. He said, I'll do it. He said, you seek, you'll find it. Knocking out open. He's, he's waiting on us to come to him. He said, boldly come with your request. You got a request? Come to the throne. Come. The word is already written for us. That you may obtain mercy, grace. See, it's obtainable now. I got the Holy Ghost. I, I can talk for myself. You understand? You know, you, you, now, it used to be you had to go through the priest and all. But now, I get direct deposit. You hear me? I, I, I go, I can sit down and get direct deposit. You know, man ain't the only one get a direct deposit. The Holy Ghost will give you a direct deposit and show you what to do next. Hallelujah. The, the, the Holy Ghost is just as real as the breath you and I are breathing now. It's just that real. So that, that rest is there. It's, it's, it's a reality in our natural state that supernatural power is dwelling in these vessels of clay. And he said, come on. Boldly come on to the throne. Come on to the throne. Don't sit there wondering. Come. He said, because there's a rest. To the people of God. Is there another verse to that? For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us labor. Labor. Sweat. Work at it. Yes. Come on where the rubber meet the road. Labor. To enter. So you don't have to always be, uh, you know, I would do this, but. No, 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 no. He said, I made a way for you to get the butt out the way. Just get it on out the way. He said, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. God said, when I tell my angel and, and give him an assignment, he said, to bless you, he said, uh, you can be assured it's, it's happening. It's happening. He said because lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now you, you got to believe God. All unbelief is sin. See you don't want to fall short. The enemy's job is to confuse you and I up here. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, he wants you to stop. Oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I never went to school for that. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm used to, uh, uh, you know, doing it like this. I'm, I'm, I'm used to just paying my bills and nothing left. Well, 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 let's turn that around. Let, let's, 
Let's pay the bills and have more left than you started with. Let, 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 let's try that. See how that works for you. Pay the bills and you still got a few hundred and uh, so in there. That's easy. He said you got to think like that. You got to think at the next level before you get to the next level. Think up there. I used to say all the time, I said, I'm a, uh, I was driving an old raggedy Chevrolet, gray Chevrolet. It's a real story. I had my children in there. And that thing, Lamar could go so far, and, and then the, the radiator would boil over. Steam be coming out, people passing by me. <laughs> Is they all right in there? I guess they was. <laughs> and so I got accustomed to carrying a couple of gallons of water in those plastic jugs. And I would pull over to the side. And I would have me a towel, because my brothers, all, I had four brothers all older than me. Now, man, when you do, don't, don't just take the cap off now. You put the, put the towel and, and, and turn it slow to let the steam out. <laughs> They, they was, so I would pull over and do what they told me and pour that water in there and it'll stop bubbling and you can, you can make it back home. Well, I was usually trying to go pick up some saints. But the Lord blessed me one day. I was looking at a nine-passenger uh, station wagon. It was station wagon then. It wasn't an SUV. White with red leather seats. Whoa! I said, Lord, I like that car. Uh, do you know God gave me that car? I didn't even have a job. Didn't have no... Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> Nobody knows but you. He gave me that, didn't he? I fill it up with saints, and you can let the back down, and I'd have people sitting on the back. They knew Sister Craig was going to pick them up. God took me from that stripped down radiator balling over Chevy to a brand new. I took the paper off with no job. Didn't have no job before. The man let me have that car. And do you know I kept it? And we rode it till he couldn't ride no more. And God gave me another one. He didn't stop. He didn't say I'm not going to give you another car. He kept giving me cars. He kept on keeping them. Yes, he did. He didn't change. Hallelujah. In, in that 13th verse of Hebrews, what does that say? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. There is not any creature, talking about you and me and anything else that moves, that is not seen by God. He sees it. And but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. There's nothing hid from him. Amen. Everything naked, open. With the one we're praying to. The one that uh, created us out of dust. He said, you can't hide from me. You can't. You, you, I don't care. Where you go, what you do, who you do it with, God knows about it. Amen. Yes. Amen. I, I'm pretty sure Jonah didn't think Jesus was going to follow him when he got on that ship to Tarshish when he's supposed to go to Nineveh. And he's going to go down in the bottom of the ship and go to sleep. He didn't know Jesus was looking at him when he uh, plumped up the pillar. And, and, and he was right there with him then. 
He saw him. Oh, yes, he did. He saw him. He said, he, everything, he see, nothing. His eyes see. Everything is no, naked and open unto him. So he knows where you at. I know that's bad English, but it's good preaching. Right. You know where you at? You know where I'm at. He knows what you need, and he knows what I need. But he told us, ask. Don't be too proud to ask. You know, some people say, oh, you know, God already know about that. That ain't what he told. That's not the formula. That's not the mechanism that he put in place. He said, if you ask, it shall be given. If you see, what's going to happen? You will find. Hallelujah. I want to read that uh, 12th verse of Hebrews 9 and 12. What did he say? For the word of God is quick. For the word, listen, listen, the word, the word, your Bible that you read every day. The word of God is what? The word what? Quick. It, that, that quick right there is translated alive, living. That word, the word that we're talking about right now, this morning, is living. Yeah. It's alive. It's quick. A quickening is in it. It, it comes alive you when you're reading and when you're receiving it into your spirit. It's something happening between you and the word. It's quick. It's living. And, and powerful. And, and when it comes power, that's why the devil don't want you to read the word. He tell you, hey, don't read that word. You're going to, you're gonna, you know, something's going to happen. It sure is. The more you read the word, the more the devil has to get out of your life. Why? It's powerful. The word will change you. If you had doubt, he'll make a believer out of you. Through the word. That's what, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it right. And it's what? And sharper than any two-edged sword. He's, he's, he's showing you that, that it'll cut. It not only cuts going, but it cuts coming. It's two-edged. It cut whatever you need for it to cut out there, and it's going to cut whatever you need to cut loose in here. Why? It's got two edges. See, the word of God is, is already a, a, a full of power. You can get delivered. You can get healed just reading the word. Because that's God talking to us. And he said, it's sharp. It's piercing. So piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul do? and spirit. It, it, it's, it's a divider. Say divider. divider. See, your, your, your soul and your spirit. See, your, your soul looks back. Your spirit is always alive and awoke. Now you may go to sleep, but your spirit is still woke. Your spirit is connected with the spirit of God. You have that. It deals with you through your spirit. The spirit of God deals with you through your spirit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Your spirit, it interacts. It engages with your spirit. And when you read the word, you, 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 you close. You, you're very close because your eye gate is taking in everything you're reading. It's taking it right in and it's going straight to your spirit. So your eye gate is what feeds that word into your spirit. So you got to keep the word in front of you. You got to keep it always in front of you. Always, every day. Sometimes two or three times a day I got to read my word. If something is troubling me, I go right and get my Bible. And then I'm going to pray and ask God, okay, so what, what about that? 
So he said, it's, it's a divider. Asunder of soul and spirit it and of the joints and marrow. The joints. You see that? And marrow. Now, you know, uh, when you stay here uh, and be blessed like me to get, you know, a few years on you, <laughs> you need your joints and, uh, and the marrow. <laughs> you need it replenished. Because you've been working on it a few years. And you know, you know, you gotta kinda ask God to help you. And, and I go to this scripture right here. I said, you told me about my joints and the marrow of my bones. I, I, I'm here to ask for some of that. <laughs> you know, you, you gotta ask. Don't I just assume God just going, oh, well, God just going to help. No, 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 no. I want some of that over there that you talked about in Hebrews. Yes. Yes. About the joints and, and marrow. Because that's what he's talking about, your bones and what's in your bones. Yes. The joints that connect your bones. And it's a discerner of what? Of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes. And while somebody is telling you, a big one, the Lord will discern and tell you that's not true. Yeah. That's not true. He said they think like that, but that's not true. And you be saying, all right, okay. And all at the same time, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is saying, you know, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't take that to the bank. Because that won't spin. Because it's not true. See, you, you got to work with truth. Because God, he, he's, he's truth. Jesus is truth. You know, people nowadays, they, they going to the left. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, you, you can't think and start going to the left. You got to stay the course and finish. You got to finish in the same faith that you started in. I got to finish holiness unto the Lord. It's his watchword and so. Now I can't go all of a sudden, but you know, you know, the Lord told me that you know all that ain't necessary. No, uh-uh. No. You can't think. You can't stop believing the truth. The word is true. My word is what? true. You got to stay in that not faint so you can finish. Paul said I kept the faith. I kept that, the faith. And then I was able to finish my course. But you got to keep this thing. This Bible is not going to go away and it's not going to change because you and I don't like it. Oh. Y'all ain't saying much. You know, the Lord didn't tell me that I couldn't. Well, if you read the word, it'll tell you what to do and what not to do. He'll tell you what to say and what not to say. He'll show you how to put a watch over your words. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he, he, he don't leave you without help. Right. Hallelujah. He's, he's telling us. He's teaching us. Hallelujah. And that 11th verse of that 9, Hebrews 9, what did he say? Hebrews, what did he say? Let us labor therefore, Hebrews 9, 4, 9. and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. L 9. We're going to read that. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. But Christ. You, you see that? Christ. Not Buddha, Muhammad, or my bishop said. <laughs> Read the book. But Christ being come, what? And As high God. priest of good things to come. You see that right there on the line of good things. Say good things. Good things. To come. See, you... 
you can always know it's good things. He said, I come that you may have life and that more abundant. I want you to have more good stuff. More good experiences with God in your life. You're not going through the same old soup warmed over. Ah, this is what I did. If you did that five years ago, well, wait, wait a minute now. You let that done played out. That's over. Bury it. Have a funeral. Plant it. And look for the good things to come. By Christ. Where's my scripture? By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Uh-huh. Not made with hands. Yes. That is to say, not of this building. He said, I, I, another tabernacle. This tabernacle was not made with hands and not of this building. See, what, what you're going to experience now is, is a, a, in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Christ Jesus, in the last day. No more all that other stuff. That people want to say, well, you know, this is a new day. It is a new day. So don't bring me that same old soup warmed over. You know, I always was like this. Change! <laughs> Change! When you really get good and, and, and saved and planted in God, you don't have to worry about your friends that ain't, you know, too churchy uh, following you. They're going to soon leave you. They, 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 ain't gonna, they don't see you the same. Every time they open their mouth, they're talking about Jesus. Good. Keep talking. That's <laughs> and 12 says, I'm, I'm, I'm almost coming to a close. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood. Yes. He entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. He said, he, his own blood, he entered into the Holy of Holies. You see that? You see that? Having, say, say obtain. obtain. Say it again, say obtain. obtain. What did he obtain? He obtained what? Eternal redemption for us. In other words, our redemption is everlasting. Eternal. He, his blood he shed will never lose his power. I don't care how they change the secular laws and the laws of the land and the da 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 and so forth. But he's already entered into the Holy of Holies. And he obtained, he got it. Say he got it. he got it. When he got it, I got it. Come on, point to yourself. Say when he got it, I got it. What did you get? Eternal redemption. You and I are redeemed. Right now, today. You and I have been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Eternal redemption. He didn't go in there to get you saved for 10 years. Well, maybe now I can, I can let him go. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Eternal. Did it say eternal? Eternal redemption. What does that say in the Amplified? Could you read it, please? He went once for all into the holy of holies of heaven. Not by virtue of the blood of goats and the calves yes. by which to make reconciliation between God and man, but his own blood, having found and secured a complete redemption. And, and how much can redemption? You are complete in him. Don't, don't, don't keep talking about, well, you know, I, I still can't remember. You complete. I'm complete. Complete. 
Now, you, you may not think so, but the Lord sees you as complete. He don't see you as, you know, making a mistake here and there and slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. Let me tell you, if you intended and he saved you, we have eternal redemption. Because when he get through working on you, you're going to be glad to jump up and down and shout hallelujah. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be running around no, you know I don't I don't know God I don't know you know I think I can do no, no. He said when you get too high the Lord will bring us down if you get your head swollen up like a watermelon He'll bring you down to peanut size You go ahead You go ahead now go ahead and get swollen up like a watermelon See, he didn't say he's going to let you go and let you off the hook. He just started working on you. See, and Paul said, I, I, this storm you got in my side here. He said, he's praying. I, I want you to move that. I can't take it. I can't take it. He prayed it. No answer. He prayed again. See, God will give you something that will keep you on the right path. And when you think you're out of the woods, he'll bring something new. Because, see, you belong to him. You accepted him. And he chose you. I say he chose you and me. We didn't choose him. He chose us. And when Paul kept a prayer around the third time, he said, wait a minute, Paul. Let me straighten you out on this issue. You got an issue. It's the thorn. He said, "But I, I, now wait a minute. Let me tell you. I, I did that. You, 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 you don't worry about that. I gave you something else. Grace. Grace is the PowerPoint." He said, "Now when you really need some help, call on Grace. Don't worry about the thorn. You're giving the thorn too much credit. You go ahead." Hallelujah. You do your work with the thorn. Serve me with the thorn. It'll keep you kind of grounded. You won't get so, you know, all shook up. Like you did it. Because you didn't do it, Paul. I did it. I knocked you down in the dust on the road to Damascus. And I blinded you. And I turned you around. He said, now you, you don't worry about this thorn I got here. See, you, you, want, uh, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to be hurting like this. I don't either. But I ain't going to faint. I'm not faint, Larry. I, I, I got to finish. You got to finish the course. You can't get no credit if you, 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 you quit the course in the middle. Well, you know, I don't just withdraw. Well, you ain't gonna get no credit for that court. You done wasted your money, you wasted your time, and you ain't gonna get no credit. You ain't gonna get no A, B, or nothing. You gotta finish that court. I don't care how many times you sign up, you gotta finish. And that thorn is gonna help you finish. See, cause you don't, you don't, you don't win. When you get too ease at ease, you 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 get you get a little bit out of whack. Yeah, we get to thinking, you know, well, you know, oh, this is, you know, I can do this anytime. No, you can't. You let you you let him withdraw mercy. Let him withdraw grace. And see how well you do. See how well you do, Pastor Cole, when you get through uh, saying you don't need no more grace. You don't need me. You don't need the Holy Ghost. You don't need the Jesus that saved you. He, he's, trying to, he's trying to tell us something. He's trying to tell you. He said, I'm the one that make you succeed. I'm the one that gifted you. It's me. Oh, it is Jesus. Ah, yeah. Oh, it is Jesus. Thing. He's in my soul. And if I, Sister Ben has, can tap just a hair 
my mother's dad. I don't worry about the thorn. Now let me, let me touch the hem of his garment. I, 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 I'm not concerned about the trouble. He said, he, he said, don't let trouble trouble you. Don't worry about that. Grace. Oh, grace. It woke me up this morning. Grace. neighbor say neighbor it was grace that I'm still here hey grace hey it starts right it's a gift from God hallelujah he shakes us did it wake you up all the can you sing that for me? Because I'm getting ready to leave. Can you give me a song, a, a verse of that? How grace woke me up. It started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Didn't have to save me, but he did. Yes, he did. We asked the finance committee to come. We're going to receive the office and we'll let you go. I tell you, I feel Jesus. I, I hear the man, he, he said, I feel Jesus.